peace is the power that this generation needs. We're so much an emotional wreck. We listen to music and it just changes our moods. We, we don't get our, our we, we, we don't get what we have asked for and so that changes our mood. We have a conversation with somebody and that triggers us and that changes our mood. In this season or in this life of just emotional wreck, we need the peace of God more than ever. You know, I'm excited because um, once in a while we like to do what's called um, series in our church. And uh, what I wanted to do or what I felt in my heart is that God was speaking to me to speak on a, a specific series or to start a new series called Counterculture. Counterculture Christianity. Um, the reason why is because in the type of world that we live in today, let me tell you that when we look at scriptures the closer we are to the end times, the closer we are to when Jesus comes to rapture his church. Yes, we are a church that believes in the rapture. I'm surprised we got to explain that nowadays. But yes, we, we are a church that believes in the rapture. And when Jesus comes to rapture his church, before that, society and the church will diverge. If you were thinking that church and society would come closer and closer and meet in the middle and kind of be friends... Let me tell you, that's not what scripture paints. The scripture says that it will get to a point that persecution happens worldwide. Now, I would tell you that we're already in a critical point. Right now, today, if you speak anything that is contrary to society, what happens to you? Or, or better yet, let me see. If, 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 yeah, you get canceled. But let me, let me ask this. Is there anybody here that could say, I feel bold at my workplace to speak uh, Christian views lift up your hands if you feel brave enough if you're, if you're like totally okay yeah I see a couple of hands amen, amen. they're ready for persecution <laughs> but but there's but there's there's certain industries like I like I mean correct me if I'm wrong but I mean being a teacher in today's society is tough imagine saying sorry I don't believe in in teaching kids about LGBTQ things what will they applaud you and say wow I respect your views what would they do to you Canceled, ostracized, they'll give you less hours. So that's what I'm saying, that we're, we're living in such a time today where we're so scared to be speaking certain views of the Bible. But I'm here to tell you that we got to get used to this. You got to understand, I got to get used to not having the fear of man. Society will have certain views. They have a different culture, but you and I, we're not part of that culture. We're called to live out a counterculture Christianity. It may look different to how the world does things, but we got to do things in obedience to Christ. And so that's what I'm, this whole series is about. I want to differentiate what the world is teaching and what God is teaching. And nowadays we get so confused because we can't even, we, we don't even know the difference. And let me tell you that there is the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness, but there is no in between. God is very clear in his morals and he's very clear in what he asks of us. Are, 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 are we here today? Amen. Don't worry. You're not going to get canceled here. You can shout as much as you can. You can say amen as loud as you can. You ain't getting canceled here. Amen. So, um, so today what I wanted to talk about or the very first thing the Lord was speaking to me is the following. And before I even start, I got to say some of the teachings in this month, it might even trigger you. It might even bring confusion to you because you're so used to hearing a particular viewpoint that anyone who speaks any differently, it just sounds strange. But here it is. Today's title is Faith Over Feelings. Faith Over Feelings. And I already hear the grumbles. Uh, I thought emotions are supposed to be important. Emotions are, you know, we'll get there in a moment. But I want to first tell you a little bit of context, a little bit of story it's in Daniel 6, 18. If, if you have your Bibles with you, let's go to Daniel's, uh, Daniel 6, 18. And I want to introduce this subject to you with the following. So the Bible says, Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no entertainment was brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king arose at dawn at the break of day and went in haste to the lion's den. 
When he had come near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lion? Let's leave it right there. What? What can we deduce from this picture? Well, to kind of explain this story, this is the, that story of Daniel and the lion's den, which we love to share on Sunday school to children. But I believe there's so much in-depth detail and principle in this story that, that I believe it can it help us in this subject of faith over feelings. What had happened here is that Daniel was caught praying and at a time when you could not pray to anybody but the king. So in, this, in that season, he was caught praying to God. And so what they did is that out of punishment, they took him to the lion's den. And when they put him there, well, guess what's going to happen in the lion's den? They were expecting for Daniel to be eaten alive by the lions. But we know the story goes that when they opened up the lion's den and looked inside, guess what they saw? Daniel was chilling. He was relaxed. He had faith over feelings. But a little detail that that we tend to miss out in is this. Is that there's a big difference. Like I said, we got to be counterculture. The society or the world has an opinion about emotions. And God has a different opinion about emotions. Today what we celebrate a lot is something called emotional awareness. It's such a secular social science that we celebrate and say, whoa, we've modernized as a society. Because we're so emotionally aware. I know what triggers me. I know what offends me. I know uh, all of the things that these things tend to do to me. But guess what happened here in this, in this scene? Is that the king loved Daniel so much, he didn't want him to go to the lion's den. But they threw him in anyways because that was the law. But guess what happened? Is that once they put Daniel inside of the lion's den, the Bible then says, as we read right here, the king went off to his palace and he went fasting. It's not he was spiritual, you know, praying to God. In fact, no, he, by fasting, it meant that he could not eat anymore. He was worried. Have you ever been so worried, sick, so stressed that you can't eat anymore? I've been there where, man, like you, you can't stomach things anymore. Like you're, you're just, you're, you, you, you've been out of a relationship and then you just can't eat anymore. You're, you're depressed, you're sad, you're anxious. And so that was King, De- uh, that was the king. He was saying that he fasted. There was no entertainment for him. Nothing could cheer him up. And look at this. And the sleep fled from him. Isn't that interesting? He couldn't eat. He couldn't be entertained. Nothing could cheer him up. And sleep fled from him. Can I tell you this? Was Daniel going through the same thing? Daniel was chilling while the king was in a palace worried sick. Can you imagine that? I think if anybody, Daniel should have been worried sick. But the king being in physically in a palace where everything is okay, he was the one struggling and you know going through an emotional wreck you want to know why it's because the king was emotionally aware while Daniel was just having faith faith over the feelings it was a shift of focus the king was looking inside 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 I'm sad I'm depressed I'm anxious while Daniel was like even though I'm in a lion's den I trust my God that he's gonna set me free from here there's breakthrough for me shift your focus from emotional awareness to Christ awareness now let me just say this off the bat because some of you guys are looking at me weird emotions are important I get it. We're not supposed to ignore our emotions. We're not supposed to just put our emotions away and bury it. That's not what I'm preaching today. To clarify that, that's not what I'm speaking. I'm just saying is that even though you have your emotions, it's not good enough to just have emotional awareness. Have emotional wisdom. Aware of my emotions, but I know what to do with it. I'm not just feeling, amen, praise God. I'm I'm not just saying I'm sad, but I know what to do with that sadness. Because I'm shifting my focus from me, emotional awareness, to Christ awareness. This is who I am now, but I'm I'm trusting in the Lord. Now that's the difference between shifting your attention 
and being able to understand. It's faith over feelings. Now, I want you to, to read in Proverbs 28, 26, since you don't, um, maybe you're not believing me. I have another verse for you. Uh, Proverbs 28, 26, look at what it says. Because today, we are such a, an emotional or feelings-led society, right? You, you see that nowadays, that it's such a feelings-led society that everything we do, how we think, is all led by how we're feeling. But what does the Bible say? Proverbs 28, 26 says, He who trusts in his own heart is a what? Ouch. That one hurt me. He who trusts in his own feelings is a fool, but he who walks wisely will be delivered. What's wisdom? Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Wisdom is shifting your attention to God. That's wisdom. So if you trust in your own feelings, I'm not saying it. I'm using the scripture. You're a fool if you're trusting in your feelings. But what we do is that when we walk with the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, being obedient to what Christ says about us, that is, that is how we will be delivered from our situation. Amen? Prophet Jeremiah also says this. He's, he's a prophet that says that, um, that our hearts are deceiving, uh, deceiving above all things. It's broken. It, do, it doesn't work. It's beyond cure. Who can understand it? That's what Prophet Jer Jeremiah said. And I think it is so true because nowadays, what do we do? We build our entire lives around our hearts. Like I said, it sounds strange because, man, I, I, I thought that was important. I thought my feelings were supposed to be important. You know what's wrong with this, with this generation, including me in this generation? Is that our emotions are our God. Our emotions, that's truly our God. We, we dictate, our, our emotions dictate how we live our life. Our emotions dictate which church we go to. Our emotions dictate whether I worship God today or not. Our emotions dictate who I'm going to marry. It's all emotional based. But God is asking us to shift from emotionally led to now you leading your emotions. It's a big difference here. And, and I, I want you to, to understand this, is that so many people have built their lives around not feeling any discomfort in their life. And it sounds so strange because Jesus doesn't talk like that. In fact, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, what did he say? Did he say that everything in life will be emotionally comfortable? If anything, he promised somebody that would come and his name is what? The comforter. Why is the role of the Holy Spirit to be a comforter? Because by definition of that, Jesus expected us to get into uncomfortable situations. When will I ever experience Holy Spirit as comforter if I'm always in my comfort zone? But I want to go out and obey the Lord and do some things that are uncomfortable to me and the Holy Spirit has promised, I'm going to be your comforter. Because this is what happens, just, just as a little example. This is what we tend to do around our lives. What we tend to do is that we're, we build our lives around our heart. And our heart is the center of our emotions. We say, man, I'm not going to look for a job that gives me two or three tasks. Why? Because I can't deal with that stress. Um... Loud noise triggers me. Um, if anybody disagrees with me, I don't know. I just can't handle that. I'm sorry. Can I get a, a few more chairs here? <laughs> every time I'm challenged, every time I'm challenged, uh, 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 I, I don't like how that feels. The boss said something to me. I don't like it. I don't, I, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't ever want to get hurt again. And what we tend to do is that then I'm so emotionally aware. Crowds trigger me, so let me avoid all crowds. Uh, speaking in public, it, it, it triggers me, so let me, let me avoid all public speaking. Whew. I'm so emotionally aware now. And I'm so relaxed right now. I'm in my safe space. And I tell you, who? Can you impact in your life while remaining emotionally trapped? Can you be used by God in here? 
God's saying, man, you're powerful, you're anointed, I want to use you, but but at the same time, I don't, I, don't, I don't want anything to discomfort me. I don't want anything to bring me out of my comfort zone. Well, God is saying, break out of your emotions. See, this is how Satan wants you. So emotionally aware, and we think that's maturity. That's immaturity. It's not mature to be emotionally aware. It's maturity to understand what to do with your emotions. Yeah, I'm afraid of crowds, but Jesus Christ died for me so I may have power and anointing. It's not depending on my strength, but on the strength of God. Yeah, maybe I get stressed out with certain things, but I'm going to learn how to deal with this stress so I can do what the Lord has asked me to do. Don't trap yourself in your emotions. That's the worst thing that you can do. You know, I I don't know if I ever told you guys about um, my fish. Um, If you haven't heard of him, it's because, I mean, I had to be quiet about it because he didn't last long. (laughs) May he rest in peace. But anyways, this fish, uh, this this is what I I learned from him is that um, I I saw him in the fishbowl. And maybe you you can call me ignorant because I really didn't know. But I bought a fishbowl, kind of like this, and I thought, man, this guy's going to have an easy life. I feed it every day, like here, have some food. I thought he was just going to be chilling in his safe space. Nothing can harm you in that fishbowl. You're good. You're safe. But I started seeing that he started dying little by little. He was f- withering. His, his, I literally saw, like you could see this, like literally his fins were all like shriveled. And I'm like, this guy's living a good life. Why is he, why is that happening? Anyways, I, I, I go and research, and what I found out was this, is that every single living thing requires stress. Like I said, this is strange because society doesn't tell you that. Society says avoid stress. Avoid what discomforts you. Don't serve if it's, if it, if it's making you feel like, like you're, you're being challenged. No, no. But let me tell you this, so, so stress is good, and it's called eustress. So the thing is that why do, th- why does, if this fish was in the wild, it would have thrived. And you want to know why? It's because in the wild, there's sharks that will try to eat it. How is that a good thing? It thrives in the wild because it has to catch its own food. How is that good? I mean, that sounds strange. And that's the thing that... It's because there's stress in his life and challenges in his life. And because there are things that discomforts that fish, it would have thrived in the wild. But because I kept it in a safe bubble, feeding it and giving everything that it needed, it died. This is Satan. He has you in emotional awareness fishbowl. Where you feel you're good. I mean, I'm comfortable right now. Nothing right now in my life will discomfort me. And that's how I like it. That's killing your spiritual life. Let me say something that sounds strange. Is that I pray that we actually step into situations that stress us out. That challenges us. Why? Why do I say that? Did Jesus not say, carry your cross? Do you know what carrying your cross means? It means difficult situations will come into your life. That means that I I need to die to myself, die to my opinions, die to anything that discomforts me. I need to challenge myself, crucify myself. And that's important. And so I challenge you, step out today out of that fishbowl of emotional awareness and step into emotional wisdom and understand I need to trust my God. Get ready to be challenged. I want to say this, 2023 will be challenging in a good way for your life. You got to praise God for that. 2023 is going to challenge you in a good way. Amen. Can we put this back? I challenge you. No. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. But, but, but do you get that picture? Is that that is why we have a society that is dying slowly. A society where no one wants any jobs that are challenging or any jobs that make us feel uncomfortable. We don't want to hear any other opinion that challenges our own opinion. But it's time to have a counterculture Christianity. I'm readying you for persecution. Say amen to that. Amen. We're getting ready for persecution. All right. So, uh, like I said, we're trapped in our own emotions. You stress is, is good. Not all.
all stress is good. There's moments where, where we feel so overwhelmed that God, what he wants us to do is not to deal with that, uh, uh, carry it ourselves, but to cast it upon his feet. Because we know that Jesus commands us, all who are heavy burdened, all those who are weary, come to me and lay it all down. Cast your worries onto my feet. That's what Jesus tells us. He's not telling you to carry your emotions, but to give it up to him. Okay? So, um... We only do what feels right, or people only follow what they feel in their heart. I, I tend to hear that a lot of, of this generation where we say, you know, I feel like God is telling me to, to do that, or I feel this. The feelings are tricky because, like we said, is that our hearts are deceiving above everything else. That's why when people say, I, I, I feel like this girl is the one, or I feel like this guy is the one, Get advice because your heart is deceiving above all things. Amen? Okay. All right. So um, I, I want to give you this explanation of what the word emotion means. Watch this. So the word emotion in the true Latin words uh, that, that compose it, what it comes to literally mean is any internal movement. Emotions are the internal movements inside of me, the things that are moving me. Uh, another definition is everything that moves out of me. So in other words, I, I might feel it, and then I'm going to act upon that feeling. That emotion, when we're led by emotions, is not good, okay? Uh, and so let me, let, let me tell you this. Nothing is solved by you being aware of how you feel, let me say that again. Nothing is solved by you just being aware of how you feel. It requires the next step. What do I do with what I feel now? Okay? Because the Bible asks us not to go from feeling to feeling. It says from faith to faith. I don't go from feeling to feeling. This feels good and so the next one is going to feel good. There's some things that from going faith to faith will cause me to do some things that are uncomfortable for me. But that is healthy. Okay. So... I want you to uh, look at this in Ephesians 4.26. Let's look at what the Bible says. Ephesians 4.26. This is good. It says, be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. Listen to this. Is it saying that you should not feel angry? Oh, thank God. I guess I can feel angry. There's times, man, I feel angry. But here's the thing. The, the trick is that we be angry but do not sin. And what does it mean, to, uh, sin, is do not let that emotion lead you. Don't let it cause you to do something. That anger, it's okay to feel it. You're upset. You're angry. Good. You're allowed to feel that. God is not saying bury your emotions. He is saying feel that anger, but do not let it go down with you when the sun goes down. Meaning, do not dream with that anger. Because guess what happens in your dream when you're uncontrollable? Man, people are be, be stabbing other people in their dreams. Like, man, if only I can... Do this to the, that person. You know, my, my dad shares this story, uh, and, and, and he always says that there were people growing up that had uh, offended him and hurt him. That There was a season in his life that he started having a lot of dreams that he had a gun, went back home to his country, and started shooting everybody. A pastor. <laughs> but let me say this to you. That's what happens when we let the anger rest with us. We allow it to go down with us. And here's the key is that we need to deal with it before the sun goes down. That means not that you're going to resolve the thing that caused your anger, but you're going to deal with it by saying, God, I give to you my anger. Lord, I give this up because I don't want to go to sleep thinking about this angry thought. Amen. Does that make sense? So it's not a sin to feel, but it is a sin to take action on that feeling. When you manifest the emotion, that's the, that's the sin, okay? Um, you know, I, I, I love that. Uh, uh, so it's not bad to, to feel things, um, but there's that meme, you know, the, the one where there's this lady, you know, 
a singing out, Holy Spirit, activate, you know? <laughs> that, that meme, I love it because it's so true. Some of us, that's what we got to do. We feel the anger, but Holy Spirit, activate it in this moment. Like, I need you, Holy Spirit, to change me right now because I'm about to lose my credentials. I'm about to say something that's going to hurt somebody. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us, and that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. When I'm uncomfortable, the Spirit comes as a comforter. You're upset? Well, let me give you the emotions of Christ. Because a lot of us think, well, well, is it bad to have emotions? No, the reason you have emotions is because God has emotions. We were created in the image of God. Did you know God feels anger too? He's a loving God, but he's also an anger God. <laughs> Yeah, the Bible says he has wrath. He has emotions. Every emotion we feel is because we're made in the image of God. So it's not the emotions that is a sin. It's what we do with it that is the sin. Okay? So we need to say, Holy Spirit, give me the emotions of Jesus. Let that activate in my life. All right? Some of you guys need that as your ringtone. Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> Getting that phone call from the wife. Oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Oh, man. Proverbs 25, 28. Look at this. Proverbs 25, 28. It says, Proverbs 25, 28. Look at what it says. It says, like a city is broken, like a city is broken into and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit. Does your Bible say that too? Okay, like a city that is broken into and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit. Broken into by who? By what? And it's talking about Christians here. Because a Christian that cannot control their emotions is like a person whose city has been broken into. What, to, to just clarify what I'm talking about, it's referring to demonic influences. I'm not saying that demons can possess you. But they can break down those walls to influence you. And, and, and how do I know? Well, maybe right now your argument is, but I don't believe in that. I don't believe any demon can ever influence me. Well, let me tell you, if people can influence your emotions, how much more a demon can? Every time someone says something to me, it affects you, right? Well, demons have that spiritual power as well to influence and that's what it's saying here. One of the symptoms that I can use to be able to determine that there's demonic influences in my life is this. When I can't control my emotions. I've been broken into. Without walls is the man who has no control over his spirit. So what do we got to do is that we got to ask the Lord, I'm going to close every door of the enemy. From any angle the enemy is coming and influencing me, I'm going to stop it and stop professing it. I'm angry because all my family is angry. Break that generational curse and say that is leaving from my life. Anything, any of those emotions or everyone in my family is scared of, uh, uh, of speaking. Everyone in my family has never been successful. We're declaring those things. But here's the thing, let's break the demonic influences in our life and be able to trust the Lord and his spirit will build up that, those walls again against the enemy. Okay, so here's the thing, that if you are today saying, well, pastor, I feel like I can't control my emotions anymore. Like, like so, someone looks at me weird and I'm going to let them have it. Like, man, I, they're going to know why that's my last name. Uh, they're they're going to they're, they're gonna hear, they're, they're gonna see why people are scared of me. But, but that's the thing, that, that, that's not okay. It's not okay. The Bible is telling us that we can feel the emotions, but don't manifest it. Turn to the Lord. Holy Spirit, help me in this moment. And here's the thing. So how can we cope with the challenges of our feelings? Like I said, don't, it's not just emotionally aware, but emotional wisdom. Let's hear this next step. In Philippians 4, 6, let's, let's see what God advises us of how to deal with stressful things. Philippians 4, 6. Look at this. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses 
all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How do I guard my feelings? How, do I, how am I able to protect my feelings? Not by avoiding everything that makes you uncomfortable, but by prayer and supplication. Intercede your way out of that emotion. Does that sound strange? I thought I had to avoid it. No, get, pray your way out of that emotion. It is possible. Because some of us are, are believing right now all the secular social science that tells us that you'll never get out of that emotion unless you take a pill. Let me tell you, let's pray to the Lord and say, God, I believe your word that tells me that I can break out of this emotion. I need, I need someone with faith to say amen to that. Someone with faith to believe that. Faith over your feelings, over what you're feeling. But look at this. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. I want you to say peace with me. This is an important word. Peace. Peace is the word that I want you to learn today. You know, um, just to, to give you a testimony of why this, I feel, is a confirmation that this is a word that I got to speak about today is that um, in, in the nighttime, I was, I was uh, finishing up my notes. I was just getting ready, getting myself spiritually ready. And all of a sudden, um, that thought came into my, my mind because I'm like, God, like, how can we get out of this? How, how can we deal with all the emotions that are going through our life? How do I deal with it? And God said to me, through peace. And I was like, okay. And so I began to pray, and I'm like, Lord... Teach me how to enter into your peace. I kid you not. It started raining where I was. Just the one who could testify is my wife. But like, but man, like it just started raining beautifully. And and man, I was able to just relax and just be in the peace of God. And I was just like, wow, this is what it feels to be able to have faith over feelings. Your peace. So if it rained last night, you're welcome. <laughs> no, but uh, jokes aside, man, it was just such a prophetic picture that it's just a, a moment of just, just re relaxation, of peace. And let me tell you this. Peace is the highest emotional state that we can have as Christians. Can I say that again? Peace is the highest emotional state that we can have as Christians. Peace is so important. And let me tell you this. Yes, anointing is important and power is important. But those two things can solve all your issues without the peace of God. So important is the peace of the Lord that in every single letter of the Apostle Paul, he has said, peace be unto you. Every letter, if you, if you look right now, every single letter that he addressed his churches, he always said peace to you. Because peace is the power that this generation needs. We're so much an emotional wreck. We listen to music and it just changes our moods. We, we, don't, get our, our, we, we, we don't get what we have asked for and so that changes our mood. We have a conversation with somebody and that triggers us and that changes our mood. In this season or in this life of just emotional wreck, we need the peace of God more than ever. We need his peace. It's the highest emotional state that you can have. And let me tell you this. Don't you think the Apostle Paul, when he was addressing to his churches, he wanted to give them what was the most important thing that he can leave to them. And the most important thing that he could deduce was this. Have the peace of God. You know how important this is to God? That even the people of God, Jewish people, you know how they greet each other? They say shalom, which means peace. Um... Uh, re recently, actually, very recently, my parents just went back to, um, uh, to El Salvador and they were looking through some documents and we found out that actually one of our great uh, grandmothers is Jewish. And so it was, it was like, for me, it was mind blown because I I'm like, man, there's such a diversity, such a crazy, I mean, our family is so mixed that I have a younger brother that's Filipino and a, an older brother that looks like he's from Dubai. But um, we have so many mixes. And so it was interesting for me to, to see that. And I'm like, wow, like, 
Like, there, there's, I mean, in my, in my family, we have a great grandmother that, that is Jewish. And I'm like, wow. And so recently, anyways, the reason why I share that is because uh, recently I just started to learn a bit more on the Jewish culture and just to step in a little bit more to just uh, appreciate the people of God. And, 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 and this is what I found out what shalom fully means. It's not just hello, because sometimes we just see people just saying shalom as hi or just a, a greeting. But look at what shalom means. It means peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. Everything you need is in peace. Everything you need is in the shalom. In the peace that comes from God. And that's amazing. How many of you guys want the shalom of God, the peace of God? Yeah, more than money, I want peace. More than power, I want peace. You know why it's important? Because when you have peace, you don't have anything to prove anymore. Are you an emotional wreck whenever you're going to serve the Lord? It's because we're lacking peace. Because when you have the peace of God, you know, I used to be very susceptible back in the day to the pressures of people's opinions. Like, pastor, you should preach that way. You should minister that way. The church should be like that. I used to be an emotional wreck, influenced by all those voices. But how do you solve that emotional wreckness? Peace. I'm at peace with what the Lord has given to me. And that's why I can serve him in freedom. You want the peace of God? That's gonna cause you to no longer just live out in your emotions. Amen, is this making sense to you? Okay. In John 14, I want you to read this. John 14, verse 27. Watch this. So John 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Remember, we're talking about counterculture. Jesus is saying, I don't give to you the way the world does. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Here's the thing is that when we're asking for the peace of God, we must come into awareness of this beautiful fact. Are you ready? Is this, when we ask for the peace of God, you're asking for something that's already yours. Hello. You're asking for something that God has already given to you because Jesus said, look, this is what I will do. When I leave this earth, when I'm gone into heaven, when I am already, when I'm crucified, I go down to the earth and I'm resurrected, what I'm going to leave behind to you is my peace. This is what I give to you. So why don't I experience peace even though I already have it? It's because I need the Holy Spirit to activate that in my life. I need the Holy Spirit to make me aware of the peace that I have in me. Amen? Amen. So this is powerful. And when you have that peace, look at what happens. Those emotions of anxiety leave. Jesus promises, when you have my peace, you might have trouble in this world. You might have stress in this world. You might have offenses in this world. But all that fear, all those emotions will flee because of my peace that I have left you. You need his peace. It's been given to you, so become aware of that peace. And here's another one. So Isaiah 26, verse 3. This will be the, the last verse that I read to you. So Isaiah 26, verse, uh, verse 3. This is how, you know, once again, using the Bible, showing you counterculture Christianity. It says, the steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace. How? Steadfast of mind. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. Here it is. Is that in order for me to have peace, what does the Bible say? I need to be aware of who Jesus is. When I am aware that he is my, my, my everlasting rock, when I believe he's the anchor of my life, peace comes into me. So we must shift we, have, we must have a steadfast of mind. What does steadfast of mind mean? It means to be decisive, having chosen Jesus. And this is why I'm saying, and I'm going to finish off with this. This is why I'm saying that we must have faith over feelings. It's not your feelings that will bring upon peace. It is your faith, steadfast of mind. Today I choose the peace of God. I look on to Jesus today. 
And let me tell you this, when it says here, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock, this is what it's saying, and I'll finish off with this. When we, sit, when we are recognizing that Jesus is our everlasting rock, we are talking not about a condition, we're talking about a position. What do I mean by that? Remember, faith over feelings. I am not waiting for my condition, I'm just being aware of my position. And when you're aware of your position in Christ, your condition will change. When I am aware where Jesus has placed me, when I'm aware that he has given me the peace, the conditions around me will begin to change in my life. Man, and so I tell you today, where, is, where are you positioned right now? You are positioned in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So I don't have to be waiting for the feelings to come. I must be living off of my faith in my position in Christ. Can I hear an amen? So I want to I let you know that in, in, in today's day and age, one of the most important priorities they will tell you is your emotions. And I get it. That's what our society has told us. The most important thing that we have is our emotions. And we, I, we put them, we have made our emotions like our idols. We obey our emotions. It dictates our entire life. When Jesus is saying, sometimes your emotions is not going to be compatible with obedience. Remember Jesus, his obedience didn't match his emotions. He was in the garden of, uh, of Gethsemane. He, he, was, he, he, was, um, he, he was before the Lord and the Bible says that he was just, uh, he was just pouring out, out of his uh, blood pour. Sorry, he was, uh, blood was coming out of his pour, sorry. As he was stressed out and just saying, God, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like going on to the cross. But that's where he began to shift from emotional awareness to God awareness. I don't feel like going to the cross, but I'm being obedient to you by looking to your will, not my will. And I feel like there's people today that need that prayer in their life. What did it say here? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know what the solution is that we're going to do exactly today is this. With prayer and supplication. Today I will pray for you. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will come to you. I only speak to you what I experienced. And I've experienced the peace of God. And you need that shalom. So different to how, you know... The, the Jewish culture, they understand that relationship with God. When they greet each other, they're saying all those things. They're saying peace, wholeness, completeness. When they say shalom, they're, they're, they're literally praying the peace of God. And that's why that culture is so blessed. Well, here we are, and the way we say hello to each other is sup. But when they greet each other, they're like shalom, peace of God blessings of God, wholeness, completeness. So today, I feel like God wants to greet you with his shalom today, with his peace today. Can you help me today by standing up, closing your eyes? Can you help me just generate this atmosphere of peace? Peace is a person. Peace is a person. Yes, it is Jesus, but as well, what is it that was left to us? That's a good theological question. What did Jesus leave behind? The Holy Spirit. His Spirit is the peace that you need. Galatians 5.22 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not a feeling. It's a position. I'm positioned in peace. And that will change your condition. I feel like there's people here who are feeling like their lives have been influenced by the demonic. You're feeling emotions you don't want to feel. You're struggling with anger. You're struggling with depression.
depression. You're struggling with anxiety. You don't choose that. There's no reason for you to feel that, but yet you wake up in the morning and you feel that way. It's because the walls of the city have been broken down. It's time to ask the Holy Spirit to rebuild our emotional lives.